Good afternoon, Roseburg Alliance family. My name is Pablo Arante. I'm one of the elders here, and today I'm going to share a short devotion with you. Um, and as a matter of fact, I can apply it to just 45 minutes ago. Um, I jump in the shower to come over to the church to go ahead and record this, and my wife comes in the uh, bathroom and says, "Hun, the air conditioner is not cooling. It's not working. So here we go. I'm taking a nice shower. The house is getting up in the 80s. The air conditioner is not working, and my wife is saying, do something about it. So my world is about to go poof right off the bat. So I get out of the shower. I get dressed. And who do I call when my air conditioner has problems? I don't call my good friend Doug Bentley because he's a welder. He doesn't know anything about air conditioning. I don't call my other good friend Craig Smith. He knows about logging. He doesn't know anything about air conditioning. So when my day starts to go in that route off, to the, off the rails, like today, 45 minutes ago, one thing comes to mind, and it happens to be what I wanted to share with you today that I've been preparing for a couple days now, Psalms 23. Psalms 23 is well known by every Christian. It's a soothing psalm written by King David. Um, it's comforting, it's encouraging, and it strengthens the faith of the believer. And I wanted to go back to Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, okay? I'm not a shepherd, don't ever plan to be one. So let's see what Psalms 23 says about being a good shepherd. David was a shepherd boy before he became king of Israel. So in Psalms 23, and some believe that it was already written when David was king already, and he was going back in his memory of when he was a shepherd, and he was relating it to his Lord, his Savior, his God. David says in Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what David says about his shepherd, his God Jehovah, and Jesus says to his followers, I am the good shepherd. So in Psalms 23, there are seven Ps that I want to share with you, and I don't have enough time to cover all of them, but I will give you a short synopsis of each one of them. So let's look at the seven Ps. In verse 1, David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The first P, if you're taking notes, or if you write on your, in, in your Bible, the first P is in verse 1, and it's provision. The Lord gives us provision. He provides for us. If you remember, when in Luke uh, chapter 11, verses 27 through 31, he says, look at the lilies of the field. They're here today. They're burned the next day. And I provide for them. Would not I provide for you? The second P is found in verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I love fly fishing. I don't like fly fishing in, um, in lakes. I prefer moving water. So I'm not too much in still waters, but I know that sheep would prefer still waters to drink water when they're thirsty. So the second P is peace. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, the Apostle Paul says, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guide our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The third P is pardon. That's in verse 3, uh, the first part of verse 3. He restores my soul. I'm going to leave that one to the side. I'm going to come back to it a little bit because I want to expound a little more on that one. Verse 3, verse, uh, verse three, the second part, the purpose. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesakes. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, 
God has plans for our lives. He has a purpose for us to live our lives out according to his will and what he wants us to do in life and accomplish. In verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Sooner or later, we are all going to walk through that valley of the shadow of death. Anybody who has ever breathed will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Who better than to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, of, of death than the good shepherd, Jesus, our Savior? That should comfort you. That should strengthen you. If you lost a family member, that should give you hope. They didn't go up to heaven by themselves. They were with the presence of the Lord. Verse, in verse 5, it says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The, the um, fifth P is protection. He gives us protection. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, it says, But the Lord is faithful. He will protect you from the evil one. The evil one is the one that's always after you, roaring like a lion, seeing who he may devour. And he will always try to do everything that he can to make you fall down, say, do, and think the wrong thing. But God himself, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, will always protect us from that. And the last P is paradise. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The thief on the cross, when he says, Jesus, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. What did Jesus say to him? He says, as of today, you will be where? In paradise with me. When we die as Christians, as, as, as people who believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, when we pass away, when we die, we will be in paradise with him. We will be in heaven with him. So let me go back a little bit to um, one of the P's that I covered, pardon. That's in verse 3, the first part. It says, he restores my soul. He pardons us. Now, I'm not a police officer. I'm certainly not a lawyer. But there's a big difference from being pardoned for something we did wrong and being paroled for something we did wrong. Okay? Let's admit it. We've all done something wrong in our lives. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us, to forgive our sins. But here... David says of the good shepherd, he restores my soul. However messy, how ugly it was, how grudgy, whatever it was in your past, he restores your soul. You are a new creation in Christ. Behold, all things are new. Okay? Pardon means that you were taken to court, you were found guilty or not. In this case, you are guilty but you are pardoned, it's forgotten like it's never happened before. We as Christians don't live as a parolee where we have to check in nightly, weekly, or monthly and have people come visit us to see we're not doing the bad thing that we were in court for. Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't work that way. He pardons us. He forgets what we've done. He doesn't check up on us to say, hey, Pablo, you remember the other day when you offended your wife? You remember when um, you, and I'm just using this as an example, when you lied, when you stole, so on and so forth? He doesn't go back to his checklist and checks things out. He pardons us. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite psalms, also written by King David, is Psalms 103. He says, For as heavens are as high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Have you thought about something? As far as the east is from the west, he has removed our transgressions from us. How far is the east from the west? Well, you could talk to any geologist or any any person who, who studies the earth, and they, or you could Google it, and they can tell you exactly the distance from north to south. It's documented. Satellites can tell you that. But who can say what is the distance from east to west? 
it's not established. It's so far, it's, it hasn't been determined. That is how far he puts his sins away from you and forgets about them. He pardons us. He forgives us. No matter what I've done, no matter what I've said, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, if we, are, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalms 23, verse 3, verse A, the, the first part of verse 3. He restores my soul. He pardons me. He gives me a new start each and every morning, each and every day when I confess my sin. He is faithful to forgive my sins. I hope this has helped you. There's a lot more to cover about the other P's, but let's go through them real quick uh, one time. Provision, peace, pardon, purpose, partnership, protection, and paradise. Seven P's, all in Psalms 23 that David writes about his Lord and that we can be confident in in our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. I hope this encourages you. I hope the next time your day starts going sideways and going off the rails and you're at the tip, the tip of your, your, uh, your snow skis and you don't know where you're going to land, I hope you remember Psalms 23. I hope you study it. I hope you took notes and you do your own notes and study about these, these seven Ps. There's so much more that the Bible has to say about these things. I encourage you to to do that, study Psalms 23, and um, may God bless you, Um, and um, even through these hard times, COVID-19, we can find our protection, we can find our peace, we can find everything we need within our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.